أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we beg our loving Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness we beg him for his protection and his guidance and we beg our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that those who are in difficulties to grant them ease, those who are sick among the Ummah, we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shifa, and those who have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon them, forgive them, make their graves spacious, and grant them Jannatul Firdaus. My dear gathering, the strength of our Iman, the strength of our Iman is connect to the strength of our love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when our love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam increases, our Iman increases as well. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, one day he said to Rasulullah, he says, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than anything except myself. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his dear friend, he said, Ya Umar, none of you will truly believe until he or she loves me more than their own selves. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala says, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than my own soul. I love you more than my own self. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He warns us that if we take or if we allow anything of this dunya to interfere with our love for Him and His Rasul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْدَوْنَهَا Say to them, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, If any of these things of the dunya, your fathers and your children, your spouses, your relations, your wealth. If any of these things is dearer to you than Allah and His Rasul, then wait and see. Wait and see what will happen. 
that Ya Allah for any of these things will not harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way but look and see what will be your end and Allah says wa ulaika humul fasiqoon and if any of these things of the dunya interfere with your Allah for Allah and his Rasul then Allah says you will be count among the evil doers among the evil ones among the wicked ones and that is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says none of you will truly believe until I am dearer to him than his father and his children and all mankind and this is the foundation of all good deeds that we love Allah and his Rasul more than anything else and Allah does not accept that the love we have for him and his Rasul be equal to the love of our parents and our brothers and sisters and the things of the dunya but it should exceed that love why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Nabi he is closer to us than our own selves he deserves more love and respect because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen him among all of mankind to deliver this message to us to deliver the message that takes us out of darkness into light Rasul and yet lu alaykum ayatillahi mubayyinat li yukhrijakum min al-dhulumati ila nur he is the Rasul who brought a message to take us out of the darkness of ignorance to show us the guidance he is the Rasul that Allah sent that will help us to earn Jannah he is the Rasul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that will help us to save ourselves from the fire of hell. He is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and given that status, that high status, that he says to us, that I will be, that's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying to us, I will be the leader of all mankind on the day of judgment. I will be the first whose grave will be open. I will be the first to intercede. And that is why we love him more than we love ourselves. Because he is more beneficial to us than our own selves. Because he cares for us more than we can ever care for ourselves. And he cares for mankind more than mankind can ever imagine. Imagine Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is an example of how he cares for mankind. At one of the lowest points in his life, after losing his beloved wife, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, and his uncle Abu Talib, and he went to the city of Ta'if, calling these people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And instead of responding to him with kindness, brothers, please come forward. There's a lot of room. Don't leave space for Salah right now. Just come forward. The people of Taif, instead of accepting Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only did they insult him, not only did they kick him out, but they abused him verbally and physically that his body was covered with blood. And after he left the city and went a distance, instead of ranting and complaining about the difficulties he's going through, this is an example, beautiful example for us. Is instead of complaining about his suffering, he started to look inward at his own self, thinking that something is wrong with him that caused the people of Taif to respond in that way. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assured him, nothing is wrong with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angels with the offer to destroy those people because of the pain they caused to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of pureness out of mercy out of forgiveness out of his concern for mankind his concern for all of us 
he chose peace over revenge. And this was not an easy task. Imagine, it was the lowest time in the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lost his wife who supported him, his uncle who protected him. And here, the people inflicted so much harm in him, but he chose peace. 1400 years fast forward and all of Taif. Because Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, perhaps those that will come after them will believe. 1400 years after, all of Taif are Muslims and they are the forerunner, the leaders in the front of those spreading the message throughout the world. And that was Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is how much he cares for mankind. And that is why he is more beneficial to us than our own selves. And that is why the companions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is why they were so successful. Because nothing would come between them and their love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Uhud. When a woman from the Ansar, when she lost her father and her brother in the battle, and she was informed of that news, the first thing she says, how is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And when she was assured that he is okay, he is alive and well, she says, any difficulty besides losing Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is insignificant. One of the companions, Abu Talha, in that battle, when arrows were flowing and the Muslims were retreating and were under attack, he shielded Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his body. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, stay behind me and do not peek. I do not want an arrow to hit you. Stay behind me because it's my neck before your neck. Protecting Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his body. When one of the companions were cap was captured, and Abu Sufyan, who was not a Muslim at that time, he says to Zaid, would you love to be with your family at this time? And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is in your place. He says, I do not wish to be safe with my family. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is hurt with a thorn. And Abu Sufyan says, I have never seen a people loving another person like the people, like the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because of that love they had for him, they were the most successful people. My dear brothers and sisters, how do we today, and this is what I want to drive home to myself first and to you, how do we today demonstrate and prove that love that we all say we have for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we demonstrate that love? It is in following his guidance. It is in following what he brought with him that truly express the love we have for him. Because love is intense, but its feelings cannot be expressed except and only by action. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kul in kuntum Allah, If you love Allah, prove that love by following Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May yuti'i Rasul faqad ata'a Allah. If you really want to obey Allah, if you really say you obey, you will obey Allah and you love Allah, follow Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, let us look inward. Let us check ourselves, do an evaluation. Do I really love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in my action, in the way I conduct myself, in the way I conduct my business, in the way I behave, in the way I treat my family? Where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, khayrukum khayrukum li ahli, the best among you is he who is best to his family. Do I really follow Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the way I deal with my neighbors? In the way I, do, I celebrate happiness? In the way I grieve? 
Do I really follow Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Can I say I love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but I blatantly go opposite and do opposite to his teachings? Can I say I love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but my tongue is filthy and my body is contaminated with haram? Can I truly say I love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But my eyes look at things that I should not look at. And my ears listen to what I should not hear. Because if we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will change us, it will form, transform us, it will uplift us. But if we go against his teachings, how can we claim to love him? فَلْيَحْذَوِ الَّذِينَ يَخَالِفُونَ عَنْ عَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أو يصيبهم عذاب عظيم. Be careful. Allah warns us. Those who go against what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Be careful of a fitna, a disaster, a calamity. Look out for the punishment, for a great punishment. If you go against Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first thing to demonstrate and prove that love we have for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not lip service. But to truly follow his sunnah, his way. To demonstrate that love. Because when you love someone, you constantly think about them and remember them and talk about them. That we remember Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam often, constantly. Because Allah commands us. Ya yuwalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Send salam upon him Because Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Allah has appointed angels To convey the salam of my ummah to me That wherever you are And you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It reaches Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So we should beautify our day and increase that love we have for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That whenever we hear his name, we say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we should miss Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and long to be with him. That when we think about places to visit, we are thinking about Mecca. We are thinking about Medina. To walk the footsteps of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To be close. To have that feelings of closeness to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that each and every one of you will have the opportunity to be a companion of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. How is that so? مَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالسِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا ذَٰلِكَ الْفَضْلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَىٰ بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمًا Those who obey Allah and His Rasul in Jannah, they will be with who? A Siddiqeen. That will be their company in Jannah. وَالشُّهَدَىٰ The martyrs and the righteous. وَالصَّالِهِينَ The righteous and the prophets. What a beautiful companionship that is. Those will be their company in Jannah. And ذلك الفضل من Allah. That is a favor from Allah. And Allah knows what is best for you. That that is the best thing for you. That is what we should strive for. If we truly love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should demonstrate that by loving humanity. Just like Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was concerned about the rest of mankind. You love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you cannot be selfish. Think about mankind, not only your family, not only the Muslim, but all of mankind. How can I assist and bring smile to those in the nursing home? How can I comfort those in the shelter? How can I help those without heat? How can I help those without food? Imagine Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was with us today. What would be his role in helping mankind? And we should, if we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is our mission, to care for the rest of mankind. 
if you love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, demonstrate that by loving his companions, by loving those who love him so much more than their wealth and their family and their own self. Today, we are t all of us are tech savvy. That's our generation. Where most people look at sports celebrities and movie stars and Instagram celebrities and the people who have great followings. And we know the name of all the quarterbacks of the Patriots and the Eagle and the Giants and all of them. And we even know their lifestyle. And all the basketball teams, we know all the players by names. And we know their history. And we try to dress like them. And have their hairstyle. And wear the same sneakers they wear. How many of us know companions by name that we can count on our fingers? Just three or four companions. How many of us really know them? The real heroes. How many of us know the brothers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Musa and Isa and Shu'aib and Saleh and the rest of his brothers. How many of us know these real celebrities, real heroes and try to pattern our lives after them? If we really love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will look at those who truly follow him and study their life and see what they did and try to do the same. We demonstrate our love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by taking him, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as our qudwa. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ قُدْوَةٌ حَسَّنَةٌ You have in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of example. And you really love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Look at his character. You have the greatest character. How he dealt with people. How he dealt with elders. The respect and the attention he gave to the children, to the young people. And the love and concern he had for them. That he will never dismiss a child. He would never dismiss the story of a child. But he will give them full attention. He will never rebuke a child. When his companion Anas radiallahu ta'ala, who was a little boy, that he says, I spent 10 years with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina serving him. And I will not always fulfill my chores the way I should. But not once did Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Uff to me. Not once was, did he show any displeasure. Think about that and how we behave today where we rebuke and scold and sometimes abuse our children for simple mistakes. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would talk to a child and when he would talk to an individual, he would give them undivided attention. He would turn his entire body, letting the person that he is speaking to feel as if he is the best friend of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you think Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would interrupt dinner because of a text message? Would pull out his phone in the middle of a conversation? No, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us good character. He taught us how to be kind to the poor and to needy. That he says, be close to the people who are poor. Be kind to them because of them. He says, seek Allah through the poor and the weak because perhaps whatever you are enjoying is because of them. So seek Allah through them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the way he dealt with his household. Do we pattern our lives after that? Do we try to follow that? If we truly love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, demonstrate that by not belittling his, belittling his sunnah. When you hear about the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there are many today, when, you, when they hear of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about his sunnah, they mock it. 
They laugh at it. Don't be among those. But feel happy. Let your hearts fill with joy when you see people following the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you should feel hurt when you see people flouting and turning away from the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You should defend Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam not by demonstration, not with emotion, but with wisdom, with hikmah, by encouraging your family first to follow the teachings of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We demonstrate and prove our love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by loving what he loved and loving those whom he loved. And whom, who are the ones he loved? He loved all of us. So love each other. Because that is what will please him. That you should love each other. He loved mankind. He was concerned about mankind. So love him. Prove that love by loving each other. He says one day to his companion, he says, this is Hassan and Hussein. I love them. These are my companions. So love them. He commands his command. So love them as well. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu he says to the uncle of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Abbas, Aslim. He says, O oh Abbas, accept Islam. And he said, I, it would please me more for Abbas to accept Islam than my own father. Why? Because that is what will please Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they prefer what will please Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam above what will please them. We demonstrate our love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by holding on to what he brought. And what is that Allah sent him with? Allah sent him with the Quran as a guidance for mankind. And if you truly love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then be in love with the Quran. Try to reflect and understand the Quran and implement it in your life. Try to hold on to the Quran. Because that is where we will prove in action that we truly love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam by holding on to the guidance that Allah sent him with. My dear gathering, shaitan, our open enemy, has been successful in cutting us from the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the only way we can regain our grounds, the only way we can regain our real identity, the only way we can really strengthen our iman and better people is if we return to our roots and love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the way we should love him. And that is by action. By real action. By following his example by taking him as a kudwa, by remembering him, by looking at his companions and study their lives, and by holding on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu kawli haza, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa muslimin, fa astaghfiruhu innahu wa rahim. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبعه إلى يوم الدين وبعد. My dear gathering, the entire life of Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم was a manifestation of gratitude and thanksgiving. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us true thanksgiving and demonstrated true thanksgiving in his worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout the year he will spend a large part of every night standing in prayer, worshiping Allah. And in special times like Ramadan, he will increase that. That he will stand in worship until his feet are swollen. 
and when his wife Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha asked Ya Rasulullah you are the beloved of Allah why are you exhorting yourself so much he said shouldn't I be a grateful servant of Allah that is how we truly do thanksgiving by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us thanksgiving in the way he seek forgiveness. That 100 times per day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would seek forgiveness. And one may ask, he is Rasulullah whose sins were, for, were forgiven. Why would he be seeking istighfar? He was doing that as a practice of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would seek not only forgiveness but he would seek protection from the punishment of the grave. And one may ask, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was guaranteeing protection. Why is he seeking that protection and that refuge? He was doing that to show his need for Allah to express that gratitude for, to Allah, to acknowledge Allah's favor upon him. This is how we truly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to give gratitude by reflecting upon what we have and show appreciation for it before we lose it. Once he left home with his two beloved companions, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu, Ta'ala anhuma, and they were hungry and they were offered a stem of dates and they ate that dates until they were filled and then Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ on the day of judgment you will be asked about the na'im you will be asked about what Allah blessed you with and then he turned to Umar and says, Ya Umar, you see these dates? We will be asked about this. What about all those food we dump in the garbage? Don't you think we'll be asked about it? What about the beautiful clothes we wear? And the nice cars we have? And the beautiful homes we have? And that which we have stored? And all the things that Allah has blessed us with, you will be asked about it. And thanksgiving is not just a lavish meal, but it's to reflect on what Allah has blessed us with. Even when we are in difficulties, like Musa alayhi salam, when he reminded Bani Israel, when their children were being slaughtered in front of their eyes. And he reminded Bani Israel, in spite of all what you are going through, in spite of all your difficulties, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ He says, be thankful. Be thankful for what? Don't only look at your difficulties. Be thankful that you are companions of a messenger of Allah. You are with Musa. You are companions of Moses. Be thankful of all the blessings that Allah has best upon you that far way outweigh the difficulties that you are going through. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by recognizing what we have. And my dear gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Al Quran how to truly prove our love and how to truly. Show appreciation and give thanks. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ How do we thank Allah? By remembering Him. By following His command. By following His Rasul. And if you do that, Allah says, He will remember us. If you are thankful, Allah says, He will give you more. But if you are ungrateful, then you should know Allah says that his punishment is severe. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik 
O Allah, give us the ability to remember you. Give us the ability to be thankful and grateful to you. And we should all make that dua as Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to say after our salah, O oh Allah, give us the ability to thank you always. I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are grateful to him, to make us among those who love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anything and anyone else, to make us among those who prove and demonstrate that love by holding on to the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by making, among, making us among those who strive to understand Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to understand his lifestyle and to pattern our life after him. Ibadallah, ittaqullah, inna Allah ya'maru bil adli wal ihsan, wa ita'i zil qurba, wa yanha'anil fahshai wal munkar wal bakh, ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkaroon, aqim as-salam. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر